It is time to compost our rank and grow to new ranks that we haven't reached before. Hey, it's Webs here with another Hearthstone deck, this time Taunt Druid. A deck that was very close to being meta relevant last set, but needed a one or two more cards to push it in the correct direction. Which for better or worse, it managed to get with United and Stormwind. For Mulligans, you always want to keep Squirrel in your hand so you have a turn one play. Razor Main Battle Guard is a card that you also would want to keep in your hand most of the time. It allows you to combo off with your low cost taunt minions in your deck, or it allows you to make your 5 cost taunts in the deck into 2 costs, which combo is out with Oracle Loon, which, which is a card that is very devastating for the opponent to not deal with in one turn, and it's hard to deal with it because you have a board full of taunts. This card was the design inspiration of this deck. It changed which taunts you could reliably use in the deck without worrying about not getting an extra copy of it. In certain matchups, Far Wash Posts is also a good card to keep in your hand as it allows you to disrupt people's early games while you establish a board of hard to get rid of minions that will just be able to end the game pretty quickly. The worst card to keep in your opening hand is Pack Mule. You won't get the proc off of Pack Mule if you keep it in your opening hand. So with that being said, let's get into the games. Alright, let's get into game 1 against Warlock. Probably going to be Quest Warlock, even after the recent nerfs. Actually, I think this game might have been before the nerfs. Since I do record a little bit in advance when it comes to making these decks. Because I try to figure out which ones of the 20 plus games that I play with each individual deck would be the best ones to showcase. We got a pretty decent opening hand, we're just going to play the Squirrel. They of course are Quest Warlock, to no one's real surprise. It's been quite a while since I've ran into any other type of Warlock besides Quest Warlock. We're going to grab the Power of the Wild here because it's a nice early cost card and we can cobble out with a lot of early cost minions. While we do have the advantage of having a minion on board and a bunch of good cards in hand, However, are missing a lot of the minion power that the deck usually has, so we're going to be doing this game a bit slower than normal. We're going to use the Guidance, and we're going to take Best in the Shell in order to trade it off so we can draw into hopefully another minion. Alright, we draw into the acorn that we just shuffled into our deck with the squirrel. And we also draw into Greybrog, which is always a pleasant card to see, at least in my opinion. And we draw into another acorn. And now we can buff up one of our squirrels. We probably should target the one that can attack this turn. I don't know what I was thinking there. I really don't. And I also probably should have played the cub before using Power of the Wild. This demonstrates the power of the deck without playing consistently well. And we get Oracle of Volun here. I want to play the Grey Bog so we can just enable a board quicker. I wonder which variant of Quest Warlock this person is actually playing. I'm assuming it's not D6 because they are using turret guide. We're going to play the Arc Panther and then attack. The 
complete the first step of their quest. There's actually quite a few different plays that we can play next turn. And they seem to be playing hand quest lock, which I think is actually the most consistent version. However, I haven't actually looked into the deck much since everyone and their mother is playing it, and I figured I'll, I'll let it exist without me also playing it. Normally it's a deck that would be straight up my alley of gimmicky. But the deck keeps getting nerfs announced for it, so I'm always afraid to make a video based off of it. I think though, the next one will be some type of gimmicky version of Quest Warlock. I think I have an idea for it. Them killing our minions are just going to fill our hands up. Sure, they get to play Soul Rend, but we get a bunch more minions off of this. Next turn, we can combo off between Oracle of Loon and Razor Main Battle Guard in order to make our teacher's pet into a one cost taunt. And there's nothing the opponent can do about it at this point since. Pretty sure Handlock only runs one copy of that board wipe. Just so they can mill themselves out pretty quickly. And here we have a completely full board of minions and nothing they really can do to stop it. They're going to kill a few of our minions with their gnolls. Kill off our oracle, which sucks, but we don't really need it anymore, so... We're going to use the tradable card and get another card. However, all we really needed is the... So, the soil, in order to buff up our minions. And we win the game. Alrighty, time for game two against Priest. We're just going to mulligan this entire hand away. It gives us no early game plan, so. And here we have some early game plan. Actually, a lot of early game plan. If we want to be greedy with the oracles, we can either use the far watch post in order to combo off with that, or we could combo off with the pack leaders or the battle guards, depending on how we want to do it. So they're Shadow Priest. So it's going to be an aggro deck versus an R aggro deck probably. Since I think the aggro deck variant of Shadow Priest is the one that's more common to play against at this point. Which makes more sense than a more control style. A lot of the new Shadow Priest cards promote a aggro base style of deck. We're just going to hero power and get rid of one of their minions. They're playing Chaplain, which is odd. And then they're also going to play a tour guide in order to use their hero power or not. Here I'm thinking of what to do, what combination I want to do. We're just going to play a back meal. 
I think the idea is for next turn, play a Oracle of a Loon into a Razor Main Battle Guard, and then coin out the Toad. I think that's what I was thinking when I was doing this. That traveling merchant is kind of big. Putting out a wide board here would be devastating for them since they have no easy access to get to my face if we do that. This should protect our Oracle Valoon depending on what cards they're running in the deck and what ones they aren't. But I'm pretty sure at this point they're just playing a stereotypical aggro Shadow Priest deck. Yeah, they're using the Gadling package in order to get a bunch of 4 4 units out quickly. I like that idea a lot, actually. That package. Also, another one of those cards that never really had a home in a deck, but is now seeing some play, so that's really cool. They're going to buff up all their minions a bit. They kill our Oracle, which sucks. But we draw into another Oracle. However, I don't think that's the play for this turn. Arbor up is a better idea to have. Because it will give us a few more minions on board and buff up the ones that currently exist. And then next turn we can use Oracle into a watch post, which will make anything they draw higher cost. And we draw into another watch post. I'm just going to use the Park Panther in order to kill off some minions. We can actually board clear here. But there's no real threat of leaving two 1-1s one up. They're on top deck mode, there's not much they can do. They're going to hard play Benedictus. It's a big minion, but it's still fine. We're going to play a loon and then play our watch post and then a squirrel. We're definitely getting low here, so we're going to have to start killing off some of the low cost minions. I don't know if the watch posts in this matchup actually would accomplish much, especially this late in the game. Early on, sure, uh, it could screw over their early game plan, but right now, honestly, it doesn't do much. You gotta get rid of the Oracle or they probably just die. They play a Reader, which is a card that really hasn't seen any play since it's nerfed back in the day. And by back in the day, I mean when it came out. We're going to play Nature Studies, grab the Guidance, hopefully we can get some type of taunt out of this. Just going to grab the Solar Eclipse and then Arbor Up one last time. Go off the Benedictus. Because no matter what, their low cost cards in their hand will be two more than they normally should be. And I'm not worried about them OTKing us at this point. Most Shadow Priests have dropped Void Shard anyways. And they get the 
meaning that increases the damage I take by one from all sources, which gets us pretty damn close to being dead. However, I think they're just in top deck mode to try to figure out if they can win or not. But they concede and we win. Alright, now that we're through the games, let's get into the discussion of how well the deck did and why the deck was built the way it was. This deck was actually probably the most consistent deck that I've ever uploaded to the channel. It had over a 70% win rate across 20-ish games. The inspiration for this deck was a mix of two things. The first being the older version of the deck from the Baron set, which I had a lot of fun with. The second inspiration was the fact that I kept running into this deck whenever I was playtesting one of the other decks for a video. And it was an interesting deck to take a break from the questline decks that I have been doing. I wanted to get done with all the questline decks before moving on to non-questline decks, but sometimes you just need a, a break from the questline decks since there's usually only one or two ways to build the ones that I have remaining. I know I could probably make it quite a few videos on certain quest lines, however I want to get more of variety before I visit some of the older ones. This deck was built in a way to maximize your benefits from Oracle of Alun, creating a pseudo taunt minion that the opponent most likely couldn't deal with in the first turn that it was up, thus giving you a very wide board, or using compost to then make all the extra copies of minions that you had summoned off of Oracle of Alun give you an extra card to refill your hand. Which is probably the reason why the deck felt so consistent, was because unlike most other aggro decks, you have a consistent way to refill your end up with more minions if you're playing the long game or you were set back a few turns. The higher cost cards such as Greybrog or Teacher's Pet were included in the deck for a couple of reasons. I wanted to have a way to have a late game board if necessary or because there wasn't really many more good low cost taunt minions that Druid has access to. This deck is running basically every single good to low cost taunt minion that you possibly can uh, that will combo off of with Oracle of Loon without having a discount from Razor Main Battleguard. However, it was really funny to pull off a Greybrog combo with Razor Main and Oracle because then you could get two Greybrogs for the price of one mana and thus just creating a board state that most people can't deal with, with unless they have a AoE silence. And speaking of Greybrog, the reason why he's in the deck is honestly I like legendaries and other cards that haven't seen much play in other sets. Sure this might be less consistent than a variant that does not run Greybrog or the teacher's pets. However, I got more entertainment in including them over something like Cornelius, which would allow you to draw even more cards and refill your hand. So if you want to replace Greybrog with a more recent card because you are a recent player, Cornelius is probably your best option there. However, Greybrog never actually felt bad in the deck itself. With that being said though, some of the cards that did kind of feel bad were Floris, which I just needed a low cost minion in order to combo off with Oracle of Loon, and it was kind of a card that's not really a druid card, but it honestly is a druid card. Um, sure, Shaman can also abuse it, but most of the time it's going to be druid who's going to try to abuse it. The other card that kind of felt bad in the deck was Sow the Soil, but it allowed you to get uh, extra 6 or 7 damage out if you had a full board, that's why it's included in the deck, or allowed you to spawn a 2-2 two -two Treant, which allowed you to establish a bigger board early on. Overall, if you ever wanted to make one of the decks that I've showcased on my channel, this would probably be it if, you, if you're looking to rank up in ranked Hearthstone. However, if you're just looking for a fun factor, maybe this isn't the best deck for you because if you're like me aggro decks aren't really that fun most of the time. I like more of the combo decks which is probably why I enjoy this current set more than a lot of people do. However 
out of all the aggro decks that I've created or played around with this set, this is the one that I've had the most fun with. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and a comment down below. And until next time, bye bye.